and the Grammy for Song of the Year goes to Coldplay for Viva La Vida! Few Coldplay songs have resonated as deeply with fans as Viva La Vida. Upon release, the song skyrocketed to number one in over 30 countries and was awarded a Grammy for Song of the Year in 2009. To top it off, the timeless melody, powerful lyrics and strong transitions made it so that the song is still widely listened to today. Yet amidst the song's acclaim, there lies an overlooked connection to a remarkable figure. Her name is Frida Kahlo. One of the most iconic uh, songs of Coldplay. Yes, and we have to thank Frida for that. Gave us a whole nother life as a band. To understand how Frida Kahlo ended up being such a prominent person for the song, and Coldplay in general, it's useful to dive into her story. A story that will reveal itself to be tragic, but at the same time, incredibly moving. Frida Kahlo was a Mexican-born painter, known for her many self-portraits depicting her physical and emotional pain. Suffering was present in her life from a young age. At six, she was diagnosed with polio, forcing her to be isolated in her bedroom for nine months to prevent spread. Here, a once happy and playful child would no longer be able to see her friends. Between her bedroom walls, she was left with only her rich imagination, which she put to use daydreaming about imaginary friends and places. The illness left her with lasting physical effects, including a shorter and weaker right leg. On turning 18, a single bus ride after school would further impact her life. After finishing her day of school, Frida went shopping with a friend. As they boarded a bus to head home, Frida realised she had forgotten her umbrella at one of the stores. She left the bus as soon as possible and rushed back to grab it. This meant she now had to take another bus home. Shortly after boarding the next bus, a nearby tram derailed and crashed into it, slowly pushing the vehicle into a wall and causing an explosion. Frida was thrown out of the bus by the blast and found with a piece of iron handrail piercing through her body. Miraculously, she survived, but her injuries were severe. Carlo's spinal column was broken in three places, her right leg was fractured, and the iron handrail had caused significant damage to her organs. Because of this, she was bedbound for months, barely able to move. Once more, she had to turn to her imagination to occupy herself. This time, however, she brought her imagination to life through painting, which was one of the only things she was still able to do. Ever since Frida was young, her father knew she had talent. Being a photographer and painter himself, he often took Frida into nature to teach her about light, composition and colour. Now, with Frida bedbound and isolated, he lent her his painting supplies, which she used to become a productive artist. After three months, Frida was able to leave her bed again, but the accident impacted her life severely. She had to endure 32 surgeries in total. She dreamt of having a child, but despite several attempts, her damaged body wouldn't allow a fetus to develop, and miscarriages followed. Yet despite all the hardships Frida faced, she wrung every last ounce out of life during the times when she did feel well. She established herself as a renowned painter and became a beloved art teacher and icon, with people looking up to her unique style and take on art. During the last years of her life, the pain of her broken spine became truly excruciating. She depicted this in her painting, The Broken Column. Frida couldn't handle the pain any longer. In 1954, she died at the age of 47. It is commonly believed her death was self-inflicted. Despite knowing her time was near, Frida never stopped painting. This still life of watermelons was finished just eight days prior to her death. Making this piece yet more remarkable is the inscription she left on it. Viva la vida can be read in one of the watermelon slices, which roughly translates to long live life. Despite her suffering and awareness of her looming death, the message Frida chose to share with the world was one of celebration of life rather than of despair. And this, of course, would later become the influence of one of Coldplay's most popular songs. Chris Martin, the lead singer-songwriter of Coldplay, first encountered the painting back in 2007 while on tour in Mexico City. We were in, on tour in Mexico City and uh, there's a painter called Frida Kahlo, you know? And uh, where, where she used to live is a museum called the Casa Azul. I went to look at it and in there is a painting called Viva la Vida, which is just written on, on a watermelon. And I just thought, that's a great title. After Chris saw the painting in the museum, he took note of it on his phone, as the bravery of the title moved him. At this point, however, Chris had no idea which song he wanted to name after it. At least eight songs were considered, but none of them felt right. This all changed when, one night, a magical occurrence struck Chris. It was about 3.45 in the morning, 
uh, on about a Wednesday, and I'd just taken some sleeping pills to try and go to sleep, and this little thing came into my head which went, I used to rule the world, and I thought, God, that's a big hit single to me, and then the other half of me said, yeah, you should go to bed, and then the other half of me replied, no, no, go downstairs and work it out. And so I went down to find a guitar, and I recorded it. This is where the song Viva La Vida originates from. The mysterious phenomenon known as creativity caused the birth of a former king's story of losing everything he once loved. While Chris was working on the record, he had become peculiarly interested in the events of the First and Second French Revolutions. This is evident from the album cover depicting the Second Revolution of July 1830, called Liberty Leading the People. Furthermore, it's commonly believed the lyrics of Viva la Vida are based on the final speech of King Louis XVI, who was the King of France from 1754 until his execution in 1793, the lyrics serving as his final message to the world before facing his execution. A natural question now arises. How is the painting of Frida Kahlo related to the demise of a king? When Viva la Vida was released as a single, it came with a B-side track called Death Will Never Conquer. If sweet death should ever conquer me, let me know, boys, let me know. This relatively unknown track is just over a minute long, but plays an important role in the overall theme of the full album, namely, finding solace in the face of death. Furthermore, although the album is often referred to as just Viva La Vida, the alternate title for the album is Death and All His Friends. When looking at the track list now, this also reveals a second title track, which closes the album in a phenomenal way. In an interview with MTV, Chris stated the following. This is supposed to be the theme of the album. We're aware of all the bad stuff in life, like death and all his friends, but that doesn't mean you should ever give in to it. Knowing this, it starts to make sense why Frida Kahlo inspired the song and album name, as her final painting resembles standing fearless in the face of death. And this is ultimately what we can hear in the song Viva La Vida. The protagonist lost everything and is contemplating his mortality, yet, tragic as the lyrics are, the instrumentals sound grand and hopeful. This becomes especially evident in hearing the song's final chorus. A chorus accompanied by a chant which, despite being released over 15 years ago, still roars through every Coldplay concert. This not only continues to move audiences of hundreds of thousands, but also keeps the heartbreaking story of Frida Kahlo alive. A story which inspires one to keep looking for beauty in life, even when everything around you is falling apart. 